I am going to name my playlist songs I'd have playing if I was picking you up from the airport. I'm Phoebe Bridgers, and this is the playlist of my life. You guys know the song? Okay, good. Hilary Duff, Where Do I Begin? That record was one of the first records that I ever had on CD that my godfather got for me for my birthday. Any karaoke, anytime, Hilary Duff is a hit. I like when in the background, everybody goes, wake up, wake up. I don't know who did that, but it's great. It's a great touch. I secretly listen to pop, no. I'm gonna take that back. It is no secret that I listen to pop music, but I am kind of a bimbo about it. I feel like everybody knows more about pop music than me. I absolutely still listen to Hilary Duff. I was just talking about this with Claro. Yeah, voice of a generation. Moon Eye just has this way of not sacrificing words for a pop banger. And I feel like that sometimes is my issue with pop music is I can only really listen like eight times and then I like stop finding meaning in it or something. And yeah, they're pop hits, every song is a hit. People think that I wrote my verse that I sing in that song, but Katie wrote it cosplaying me basically. She was like, if Phoebe were to write a verse, it would be about being stoned in CBS. I actually cannot smoke weed at all without having a full-blown panic attack. Luna are genius with their music videos, and Ali, the director, just had this vision. I, I don't usually start with a really strong video idea, so it was fun to show up, and I had just seen But I'm a Cheerleader for like the fifth time in my life because I was showing it to some friends. It was a great day. It's the first time in my life I've ever worn pink, so that was cool. Caleb. Caleb is friends with those guys and friends with me. If I was going to straight straight therapy, I'd want him to be my my coach. So this song is on the playlist because it's the first thing my label ever put out. And I was just taking a walk and someone sent me Claude's music. And it was like just a cool experience being like, is Claude signed? And then getting a no back. I was like, great, let's do it. I'm really drawn to people who are like the god of their art. I think Mitski said that, like I'm the god of my art. Like when there's no trick and it's them. But what I'm really drawn to about Claude is like, if they're playing an acoustic guitar on a voice memo, it sounds like a Claude song. I put, LCD on my playlist because I saw them in Spain in the middle of like a very grueling tour with, no pun intended, all my friends on the tour. And we just, we had like great spots. They start playing. It's all analog synthesizers, which is so awesome. I don't know. And you can tell that they all like each other and that they're having a blast on stage. And so it's like refreshing to see people farther down their career when you're on like a grueling tour. and seeing a bunch of people who are friends, and, um, and it was just like the most fun show ever. I've been on tour with bands who like keep se separate dressing rooms from each other. Space is important, and sometimes I wake up feeling shy, but, but I wanna want to hang out with everybody. Should have said some, some, some. Couldn't find some to say. I had been recommended Julian's record by like every other person that I talked to. And it was kind of pissing me off because I felt like it was like a lot of people being like, queer, white girl music, it, you're gonna love it. Um, so I like had very much resisted listening to it. And then of course I heard it and was like very flattered by that comparison then. Something is the first song I heard. So yeah, it was the first one that I was like, oh damn. Julian's lyrics are insane. She made that entire record in like a day. Then we ended up doing a whole tour together. I, I watched the show every night because I was so affected by it. I just fell in love. Julian took me on a leg of the tour for that album and took 
Lucy on the other half of that tour for that album. We decided to like join forces and do a tour at the end of 2018. I feel like that tour was like the best time of my life. It is true that I force people to wear uniforms, but I love a uniform. I, I get stressed out if I have to choose what I'm gonna wear on stage every night. I can't even really dress myself. Like I wear a uniform every day. I wish we had several sets of the same uniform, but actually we just have a really disgusting suit jacket that smells like BO from 30 days ago uh, that we put on every night. We recorded on the same day as a song for Julian's record, this song and another song for Lucy on their record. It was just like such a special day and we had connected after months apart. This was like a group vocal and we had a bunch of Lucy's friends and like Mitski and my guitar player, Harry. A great, a great studio day. Days where there are like a ton of people around the studio can be kind of stressful, but if, but if everybody knows what they're doing, it's, it's the best. So I try to keep it pretty small, but if I do have like a choir or group vocal or something, it's just kind of a more fun environment. And Lucy has this way of like laying out all the facts and letting you figure out how you feel. I imagine Lucy as a little kid, like thinking about all this stuff, which is hilarious. And I love the grabbing asses line because of course I do. It's just, yeah, a beautiful way to sing grabbing asses. My friend Harrison and I, when we first met, we listened to a lot of the replacements. They have a great song called I Hate Music, which I love also. I hope to make recordings like they did someday. Like you can just tell that it's live and they are like, it almost sounds like they're gonna fall apart at any time, which I love. And then I saw Connor Oberst do it solo on a tour when I first met him and it was striking and awesome. Replacements to me are like a very like, a, a band that's like notorious for partying really hard. So I like this other lens of uh, what it's actually like to need to drink every day. Yeah, it's just, it's just a <laughs> <up> song. <laughs> I took pictures of you long before I met you. Just a fragment of my mind. This song is a great song to fall in love to, I think. I like when people who typically write really sad songs break out of it and, and write a pure love song. I hope to make a recording like this. I think I'm like really drawn to, to stuff that's this simple. Also, there's a guitar that comes in right at the end that I love that too. Once all the lyrics are over, a guitar part comes in. And that's really cool to me. Just to keep you safe. But I love a song with like one element and another element, and that's it. I feel like once a year I hear an album that makes me feel like I did when I was in high school, where you like listen to the album every day, like as a piece of music. This album is just amazing, and it just feels like a recording can be weird sometimes because if someone's really good at something, sometimes it can actually be masked in recording because, because it's clear that it's multi-tracked or that like you did a million vocals or whatever. And then there are certain bands and artists who, who have a way of recording live that, that you can feel. Like the whole record feels really live and cool, even though there's doubled vocals and it's not all live, but Gillian Welsh does that really well. Replacements do that really well. And Dijon does that really well. I listen to a lot of my old music, like again, stuff that I heard when I was a teenager that'll always make me feel the same way. And then I have to like give myself a break from that stuff when you stop being able to feel it. So when a new record comes out that I fall in love with, it's such a relief. I'm Phoebe and this was the playlist of my life. Thanks for checking it out. Mm -hmm.